the Canadian slasher that gave us an underrated masked killer, as well as a love triangle in the early 80s. My Bloody Valentine tells the story of Valentine Bluffs and the miner who stalks the small town looking to punish anyone who ignores the tragic history of the holiday. So without further ado, these are some things you didn't know about My Bloody Valentine. From the heart comes a warning filled with bloody good cheer. Remember what happened as the 14th draws near. We're told that the movie starts on February 12th, which is a Thursday. This means that Valentine's Day falls on a Saturday, and there's a Friday the 13th in between. If you've ever wondered if the actors in the shower scene were really naked, Mihalka has confirmed that they were. At this point, I think we all can guess that in scenes where a character is in water, it probably isn't warm, and this is no different. According to Rob Stein, the showers the miners were taking only appeared hot because steam was blown in using fans. The water itself was icy cold. During the scene where the miners are driving into town, TJ's Camaro is actually being towed by the pickup truck he was racing. The houses that are shown throughout the movie were originally built by the Cape Breton Coal Mining Companies as houses for the miners. It's very likely that you can still see these houses today. Mike and Harriet's deaths were supposed to be seen. In a scene reminiscent of Friday the 13th Part 2, they were skewered with a drilling auger. Unfortunately, this is not one of the scenes that was added back in with certain editions of the film. The Ballad of Harry Warden was not thought out ahead of time, and was actually a last-minute idea from Paul Zaza. Its creation came about when the producers requested that Zaza come up with a song that would be a hit single. He got the uncredited John McDermott to sing it. Zaza has the complete soundtrack but has never released it in full due to, in his opinion, not enough interest. However, Mary Bottrell, who worked with Zaza on the soundtrack, has released her songs on an album titled The Star. John Dunning and Andre Link came up with the concept for the film when they were searching for a holiday that hadn't been used in a slasher movie at the time. They used the working title The Secret to prevent anyone from using Valentine's Day before them. When it was decided that the Princess Colliery Mine in Sydney Mines, Nova Scotia would be the location for Hanager Mines, residents of the town decided to clean the place up a bit. The cleaning up and painting of the mine cost about $50,000, and unfortunately, it was the exact opposite of what the My Bloody Valentine crew wanted. They had wanted to use the mine due to how realistic and rustic it looked. According to George Mahalka, $75,000 was spent to undo all the work that had been done by the town. A couple weeks before filming began, the cast explored the town and adjusted to the typical lifestyle there. It's also possible that they encountered the usual occurrence of fights at the bar. Some portions of the mines that were shot in were 900 feet underground, and specific lighting had to be used as there was a very real possibility that methane could cause an explosion. Apparently, one of the practical effects by Thomas R. Berman caused Mahalka to throw up when he first saw it. As with almost every production, certain props can cause issues when being shipped around. Apparently, when a fake body in a coffin was sent to the set, Canadian Customs received quite a scare. As I mentioned in my review, none of the cast knew who the killer was throughout filming. According to Affleck, he did figure out that he was playing the killer when he had to go to the makeup effects department for the severed arm prop at the end of the film. Scenes were cut because of John Lennon. Yes, you heard that right. About nine minutes worth of some of the more violent scenes were cut by the MPAA because Lennon's death, as well as Friday the 13th, caused negative reactions from people to violent moments in movies. Sometime after filming finished, the Princess Colliery Mine was buried and has since become a park and museum. Following the trend of actors taking pieces of the film home with them, Affleck has said that he kept the minor helmet that he wore. My Bloody Valentine is Quentin Tarantino's absolute favorite slasher. Yes, My Bloody Valentine the band did get their name from this film. We were supposed to receive a sequel in 2001. Paramount had been contacted by Mihalka with a synopsis for it, but because the original did poorly at the box office, Paramount rejected the idea. My Bloody Valentine appeared in the March 2007 issue of Entertainment Weekly's Guilty Pleasures Testosterone Edition in 17th place. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like to let me know. See you later.